Today on The Grid, it's mirrorless camera Q&A day. Rick Salmon is joining us via Skype about his new project. We're taking your questions live on the air. We're giving away some cool prizes. It's going to be awesome, and it all starts in just 60 seconds. Grid is brought to you by Tamron. Check out their 28 to 75 millimeter f2.8 lens. It's for Sony full frame mirrorless. It's awesome. Go to tamron-usa.com. And Profoto, the light shaping company. Check out the Profoto B1X, powered all the right places. Go to profoto.com slash US. And Platypod, the tripod alternative that is changing the world. Everybody has a Platypod. You should too. Go to platypod.com. Well, hi, everybody. Welcome to another live episode of The Grid. Scott Kelby here with Mr. Eric, the real rocket man, the Kuna man, the K-man Kuna. Hey, guys. How's it going? Sorry, it was a little long. Yeah, that too. Hi, Mr. Kuna. Hey. Hey, we are glad everybody's here today. we got a fun day. Uh, last week, I mentioned on my blog that I've switched to mirrorless and finally pulled the trigger and bought a Canon EOS R, which I happen to have right mm. here. So Canon's, I would say, mid-level mirrorless camera. And a uh, ton of questions. You mean you're like not going to shoot those. sports with it? No. <laughs> I will talk about that. Uh, loads of questions. I've got some of the questions that people Deal asked. Breaker. And, of course, we want to hear from you as well. Uh, also, we are excited to have Rick Salmon, one of the best guys in the world, is going to be Skyping in about his new project. He's also a mirrorless shooter, so we're going to mm -hmm. talk to Rick about yeah. a little bit about mirrorless. But he's got a great new project he did with his awesome wife, Susan. So that's coming up a little later. Uh, what else do we have? We've got some giveaways today. But... Right now, our whole staff, everybody here, is in Photoshop mm -hmm. world mode. So next, next week, week, starting next, what, Thursday? A uh, week well, from tomorrow. Wednesday is pre-con day, and then yeah. Thursday, Friday, So it, it officially kicks off a week from tomorrow. Uh, if you want to go, it's not too late. If you're like, hey, you know what? It's next week. I should go. You should go. It starts next Thursday in Orlando, Florida. And if you can't make it to Orlando, we're doing it again on the West Coast in Vegas at the end of August. But if you want to go to Orlando... It's not too late, and a bunch of people from the grid are going to be there. People that are watching the grid, friends of the grid, are all going to be there, and we hope you were and we're there, too. we're going to have too. a live episode of the grid from there. We are. We're working on the location today with our producer, not a Christina. Dead one. And so we're going to have a... a uh, a live episode of The Grid from Orlando next week. So we're excited about that. Let's see what else we got. Uh, one more thing, and then we're going to roll into this. Uh, I announced two new cities for my brand new photography tour. It's a full-day seminar. It's called the Ultimate Photography the Ultimate Photography Crash Course. Yep. And uh, the two new cities for July are Chicago and the Detroit area. So I'm in Chicago on the 17th which is a Wednesday, and then the following day, Thursday, I'm in Livonia, Michigan, the Detroit area. So I hope you'll come out and see me at one of those days. The first two days we just did in Indianapolis and Minneapolis, and I was thrilled yeah. with the feedback. Brave. So Brave uh, reviews. I hope you'll come out and spend the day. It is one day that will make a big difference. So hope to see you there. All right, topic today, mirrorless camera day. So mm -hmm. I, I want to go through some of the, the questions I, I got again and again and, and again. And if people have questions, just, yeah, ask yeah, them. Yeah, we want to answer your questions since it is mirrorless camera Q&A day. And so uh, I, got to, I got to use this as a loaner. So when it first came out, I, I got it for two months. Eric and I both had mm -hmm. one. So Canon let us borrow one for a couple of months. How sad were we on the day we had to send them back? It was a sad day. We were, it was a very, very sad, sad day sad because day we, became, we became very attached to our murals, didn't we? Yep, yep, packing that up. I think we shed a chair. Yeah, we did. So, uh, and I've been kind of waiting and I wanted to see what Canon was gonna do with their pro model, but I haven't heard I anything. I think we talked about it on a, every kind of like two weeks, we'd always be like, well, yeah, should I, should should I? get one? Yeah, and I, was really, I don't know, I was pro really model. close. We were, we were in January, Eric and I were at Imaging USA, and mm -hmm. if B&H had a booth there, I would have bought it. B&H didn't have a booth there, and I get all my gear from B&H. So if B&H had been there, I would have bought it in January, but I waited and procrastinated. But I've got this uh, seminar coming up in Paris. Two days after Photoshop World, I'm off to Paris. So well, I think what sealed it, too, is uh, you got you got another loaner back uh, when you went to go shoot the aircraft carrier. Yeah, I, when I went and shot the aircraft yeah. carrier a few weeks ago, I, I asked Canon. I said, can I, I, you know, Canon CPS, can I borrow one for a week? And, of course, they're like, sure. And so they let me have it for a week, and I was like, 
I, I, I don't know why it. I waited. I should have got it in January. I should have just come home yep. and called B&H. And this is what I did. So I got a, a, there was a deal on these. So it's 300 bucks off at B&H. So snag there one. There you go. Got it. I By the way, peer pressure into buying it. He it tried to. You, I've never had more gear peer pressure <laughs> from anyone than Eric in a long time. I want to read you a comment, though. So a guy gave me some crap on Facebook. He said, here's what he wrote on Facebook. And he didn't use his real name, of course. He said, it's easy to go mirrorless when you don't have to pay for the new equipment. You cannot tell me that you actually paid out of your own pocket. Really? Yeah. Yes, I paid out of my own pocket. B&H can attest to that. Yeah, we <laughs> all do. So, uh, yeah, I know that people think, oh, you just call up Canon and they send you free stuff. Now, sometimes Man, they I will wish. provide, like, uh, test equipment, loaner yeah, gear. Yeah, we had loaner. They, we had for 60 they days. They want it back. It's yeah. not like they just say, There's always a it. return date, seems like. So, anyway. Yeah. But, um, so, yes, I did actually buy it. It was my own money. I called B&H. They had it here in a couple of days. I, and, and I got the... And, and so the first thing I want to talk about is one of the things that I had a lot of questions about. So I, I bought the camera body, but if you notice, between my camera and the lens, there is an adapter. So there are three different adapters that Canon sells that allow you to be able to use your existing lenses. And that was a big thing for me. I wanted to be able to use my existing lenses. The lens that you see on here is my 16 to 35 f4 and that is my like my go-to 16 to 35. Yep, yep. i love sharp. this lens super sharp and it's, it's fairly lightweight yep. um it's one of the smallest lenses i have and, and still look how big it is than the 2.8 way more affordable than the 2.8 actually can you look up the prices between oh, the yeah. two so eric's going to look up the price between the f2.8 version and the one that i have here which is the f4 so but i want to talk about the adapter because there were so many questions about it First, as far as, as the quality goes, when you put the adapter on, it's fine. The quality is great. I don't notice any difference in quality whatsoever between attaching it to my 5D Mark IV or attaching it to the EOS R with the adapter. So while you do have to carry the adapter with you, eh, um, it, it's quality-wise, take it off the table. There are three choices. For 99 bucks, you've got one that is just the adapter. It just lets you use other lenses. I actually went for one that I got for, I think, 179 on the deal. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it has a ring on it. It's called a control ring. I don't know if you can see it, but it is a dial that you can rotate. I don't know if you can hear it all. Put it up near the mic. Probably can't hear it. Anyway. I think they probably could. But what's nice is you can decide what you want to assign to that. You can assign to it ISO or you can assign to it exposure compensation, which, by the way, is what I do. So I assign mine to where I'm shooting and I want it to be a little darker or lighter. My hand's already right there, so I just move it. Mm -hmm. But you can assign it to whatever you want. So I paid a little extra to get that. The third one is one that's that a lot of people really like. And, okay, the one I have is called the control ring mount. Thank you for pulling that up. The second one, though, is, or the third one, excuse me, is one where you can drop in filters. Mm -hmm. But I want to read you something. So look, it comes with a variable ND filter. Now, I haven't tried it. I didn't even know that these were out yet. <laughs> but I haven't tried it. But I can tell you this. My experience with variable NDs has not been great. I yeah. get a lot of vignetting. I don't know if there's going to be, I don't know what there would be vignetting yeah, when I just don't know because it's before, the, before, it's after the... Right, it's, it's not screwing after, on to yeah. the end of the glass. It, there may be no vignetting, in which case that, that could be very nice. But that makes the adapter $399. So what you're getting is the adapter and a variable ND filter. But listen to this. Now, I haven't confirmed what I'm about to read to you, but a gentleman wrote this on my Facebook page, and it got me kind of concerned. He wrote, Something to keep in mind for those who buy the adapter with the polarizer or the ND filter drop-in. Yeah, because you can switch either one. Right. Yeah. You have to also buy a clear insert for when you don't want to use it filtered. Or you have to have both the filtered and the non-filtered adapters available. San and Canon sells the clear filter, so it's just clear mm -hmm. glass, for $129 which is why they don't cover, come with a cover for the opening when you take the filter out. Oh, why they don't come with a cover for the opening when you take the filter out is beyond me. But hey, it's money. Am I right? So anyway, so yeah, there's the $129 adapter. So huh. you're really talking yeah, that's $530? Mm. 
Yeah, that's that pretty. seems like a lot of bones. If well, I didn't have, get that yeah, one. Yeah, because you already, you already have an ND filter for this. You're just throwing it on yeah. the front. And that's that's one of the reasons why, by the way, I wanted to use my, because I've got my, I have my nice ND filters I'll be taking mm -hmm. with me to my workshop. And I'm real big on neutral density, real, real big on doing long exposure. So is Eric. We're both yeah, ND guys. Yeah, you got a hiata, right? Yeah. I have the hiata. Yeah. And they're inexpensive, like the yeah. They're well, like, you actually went to the screw in. I, one. I have both the big square ones and, and the, the screw, screw in, in ones, and the screw in ones for travel are great. You yeah. just throw it in your bag; it's really easy and small. I already have all that, so yep. I don't want to go buy the new one. So anyway, yeah. but there's people that would be very attractive for, but five hundred and forty nine dollars is well kind of expensive. Yeah, I didn't know that you had to have that other filter in there. No, I did but, not know yeah. that either until he wrote that. So anyway, and and I haven't confirmed that, but he sounds. You know, it, he said it with authority, Eric, so it must be mm -hmm, true. Mm -hmm. No, I, it's it, on it, the Internet, too. It's on the Internet, and you got to believe that. Yeah. So, no, just kidding, of course, but I do appreciate him. Here's the, here's the difference. All right. It's eighteen ninety nine for the F2.8. All right, for the 16 to 35, F2.8 is how much? eighteen ninety nine. And how much is the F4? $9.99. Ooh, so it's almost, almost $1,000. $1,000 difference. A thousand, and it's lighter? For a stop. Yeah. And it's lighter for a stop. It's 1000 bucks. so. Yeah. Yo! Yo! It's expensive mirrorless yeah. talk day on the grid. Okay, so that was one thing I wanted to talk about. Uh, we got a bunch of shout outs too we're going to get to here in just a second, and we're going to have Rick coming up in a minute. Uh, I want to read something else, and this is a bigger issue that I saw a number of mm -hmm. times. And uh, this is from John Keenan, who wrote on my Facebook page, he wrote, I still don't get it if I'm being honest. How many of those advantages that you list in the article are directly to do with being mirrorless as opposed to features that have arrived because it's a new camera. In other words, features that would, could, or maybe on a 5D Mark V, if that ever comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And so what I wrote back to him was, well, some of them are. There, there are some of the features. So I, in my article on my blog, if you go back to, when did I say this, Monday? Mm -hmm. If you go back to Monday on my blog, I did list a number of, of things that, these are the reasons why I wanted to switch. Right. I do want to tell you this. My photos will look absolutely no better with this camera than they do with my 5D Mark IV because they essentially use the same sensor. However, I would argue a little bit, a little okay. bit there, and that is there are these ergonomic features with this one that you might not fight with as much as a 5D Mark IV right. that it, will make better pictures. Well, I don't know if they will actually make better quality pictures. They'll make the pictures taking experience better or faster or easier for me. It, or shots that you wouldn't have normally got because you would have got frustrated and just left. That's true as well. That's what I'm saying. So, so I'm what saying. it is, is the reason I upgraded is because I wanted a better camera experience. In other words, I love my 5D Mark IV. Crazy mm -hmm. about it. But once I saw some of the features that were on this mirrorless, like the, the articulating screen. full articulating screen, the way the touch screen works, yep, the, touch the, screen. the control adapter, the mm -hmm. little, uh, there's another feature on the back of the camera, which is a little touch slider that you can assign to three things. Uh, and I assign mine to ISO. If you hit the left one, I have it assigned to 100 ISO. If I hit the right one, it assigns it to 1600 ISO, or I can slide in between and change my ISO anytime just on the fly with just a tap or a slide. So there's that. There are a lot of things that, that are unique to this camera, and there are also things that are because it's mirrorless. Now, here's something I love, and I listed a lot of the things I love. This one is so tiny, but so big. When you take the, the lens off the camera, it automatically puts a door in front of it. It just shuts it. Just kind of like point and shoots used to. Remember yep. point and shoots? You yep. would turn it off and they go, and they protect it so you didn't have to have the lens cap. Well, this thing has a little door that comes down because I'm telling you what, when you get junk on your sensor. Oh, and I'm telling you, I can attest to this. It's a like, pain in the I butt. I've used a bunch of different mirrorlesses. Um, and I can say that there was one shoot that I was on that we did and I had to spend three hours cleaning off the spots off of uh, one of the one of my friends that we were shooting with. We we did the shoot together, and he had a Sony A7R3, and I had to spend three hours cleaning up the sensor. Oh dust, man, because it's just everywhere. Yeah, I get everywhere. everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. So, now so, he was an extreme case. He needed to right. just clean it. Now that was that is a, is a feature of this particular model. Now, so to, to get back to what that guy said, couldn't you just wait for the 5D Mark V? Wouldn't some of those things make it over Probably, there? Oh, yeah, definitely. Some of them would, but some of them wouldn't. For someone who likes to shoot long exposure like I do. So, you know what? We're going to talk about long exposure when we come back. 
Uh, when we come back, by the way, uh, we're going to be joining Rick Salmon, who's joining us from his palatial estate in upstate New York. And yep. uh, we'll be talking with Rick uh, about a little bit about mirrorless. I want to talk about some things that are specific to long exposure that I think are very, very nice that mm -hmm. are part of it's mirrorless and part of it is this Canon model. But we got a whole lot more to talk about and we, we see your questions coming in. We're going to get to those and we'll ask Rick some too as well. Stick around. We're live right here on The Grid. Hi folks, Scott Kelby here. I want to tell you about an email I got, an angry email. So I, you know it's angry because the subject line says, Mr. Kelby. First, anytime somebody calls me Mr. Kelby, you know it's, you're in trouble. Mr. Kelby, I'm so mad at you. That's what the head, the subject line was. I'm like, oh great. So I go read it and he's like, Mr. Kelby, I, I saw your, your class on photo books and, and I went and made a photo book and I'm just so upset because now I've made 34 photo books and you've got me hooked on these. <laughs> And I went, Whew. but that's how it is with photo books. I mean, think about this. All right, we have the shooting part, which is very creative, right? And then we have the editing part, which can be fun and creative. When you start making photo books, you're adding a third leg to this chair. Now you've got this other thing where you're the photo editor. You decide which photos make the book, how big they are, what goes on the left, what goes on the right. Oh my gosh, it's so much fun. And Adobe made some changes. Now you can lay out pages any way you want. You can just. Literally, it's like free transform. You can just make the photo whatever size you want. You can have multiple photos. They can overlap one another. You can have grids of 9, 15. You don't have to have a grid at all. You can just design it. I wanted to do a class that takes you from beginning to end, and I'm going to show you how to make it so fast that you'll be able to focus on just the fun. And when you hand somebody that photo book and they get it in their hands and they're going to be like, you, you did this? This is your photography? They're going to be blown away. You're going to be blown away. You're going to have a great, great time doing it. And the whole thing is self-contained right here in Lightroom Classic. If you want to learn a whole bunch about doing photo books, and you'll be able to follow along right with me and do your photo book right that same time, go watch my class. It's called Creating Beautiful Photo Books in Lightroom Classic, and it's exclusively at Kelby One. When you need a tripod that is compact, that is portable enough to take with you anywhere, one that is adaptable to any situation, that will prove versatile enough for any shoot, and is compatible with your other gear, giving you freedom to create your own perspective. Look no further, Platypod Ultra does it all. Visit platypod.com for more info. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by B&H Photo, the professional source since 1973. Hey, everybody, we're back. Scott Kelby here with Eric Kuna. I've got my headphones on because we've got standing by somewhere in upstate New York, a beautiful man. There he is, Rick Salmon. Hey, buddy. Hey, Rick. Oh, oh I can't hear Rick, can't but we're assuming Rick, he said yeah. hi, guys. We're just going to. Hey. Oh, there he is. Hi, Rick. Hey, man. How you doing? We are doing excellent. Glad to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And Susan's going to be joining us in just a little bit. Yeah, because we want to talk about you've got a new project and we want to talk about that for sure. Yeah. Uh, but you're a mirrorless user. You got on it before we did. Like, I think we all tried it kind of the same time. But because you're a Canon Explorer of Light and all fancy and everything, you, you've been shooting mirrorless with that thing for a long time. Yeah, I took it exclusively, and people were really surprised at this, guys, that I took it exclusively to Antarctica in uh, December. You know, and people saying you're going there with the camera with like one card slot and the battery power oh and all God, stuff. How did, how did how you did do, you Rick? Were you okay? <laughs> I, I survived. <laughs> and, the camera survived. <laughs> and actually, you know, I have this beautiful gallery on my site of these pictures from the bottom of the world with the mirrorless camera. And I also took it. And thanks to uh, Jason and Juan for the great job they did, by the way, in the Costa Rica class. But the first time I went there, totally mirrorless. So 
I'm definitely selling my uh, my uh, digital SLRs and go, going totally mirrorless. And like you, I actually pay for my cameras. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you probably get a better deal than Eric and I do. You probably know somebody. I mean, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you're a Canon Explorer Lite. Eric, Eric and I are called Canon customers. <laughs> So there there's, a, there's a difference. Anyway, so Rick, We're proud um, Canon customer. So we have a bunch of questions here, and, and I'm going to ask some of the questions to you as well that we're getting, if it's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, Sarah just asks, uh, and I'll, I'll answer for mine first, and I want to hear what you're going to say. But I think you just kind of answered this question because Sarah asked me. So you are you going to give up your 5D Mark IV, considering they're almost the same camera? So Sarah, for me, m my 5D IV becomes my backup camera. So when I go to Paris, I will take the EOS R and that's all I'm going to shoot unless I drop it. If I drop it and it breaks, then I'm going to the 5D yeah, Mark IV. The 5D Mark IV happened. is officially yeah. my backup camera. My backup camera was a 5D Mark III. So mm -hmm. Rick, you said you're you're selling your, your other stuff and going all mirrorless. Yeah, definitely. And you know what I'm doing now is uh, we're going to the high Arctic in a couple of Maybe in about 10 days. So I'm borrowing from a Canon CPS because I only have one here. I'm borrowing the second one because I don't want to take the two cameras, uh, systems, and play around with the ring and change the uh, the adapter ring, <laughs> the adapter back and forth. But uh, I find the mirrorless, you know, a lot of people say, I'm going mirrorless because I want a smaller, lighter camera. Some people say they're getting older. <laughs> Myself and we're not. We're not getting older. You and yeah, I, Rick. No, we're not, we're not getting older. But the main reason that I think that mirrorless is so good is, and I'm sure you'd agree, is well, I'm not sure, <laughs> is the viewfinder. You know, seeing that image in the viewfinder, seeing the live histogram in the viewfinder, being able to see your exposure compensation in the viewfinder is really, I think, the big benefit. But I have another tip, and mm. this is for this is for people photography. So you know me. My, I tell people my specialty is not specializing, but I do love photographing people. So if I'm in uh, India or wherever photographing people, I usually shoot, right? You've got to shoot with uh, both eyes open, by the way, so you can see what's going on. Usually I photograph a person and I look down and, you know, I check it. And that couple of seconds, the person I'm photographing, they might think, oh, he's losing interest or he's checking the shot. Because you see the image in the viewfinder, when you shoot, mm -hmm, you don't have mm -hmm. to. You don't have to do that. I think that's a really cool feature of a mirrorless. It, it took me a little getting used to for, for that, Rick, because you take the shot and you see the shot that you just took appear inside your viewfinder while it's still on your eye, yep. and then you got to press and wake it up to see the live view again. It took me a little getting yeah, used to on that. Yeah, it takes just a little bit, but then once you get used to it, you don't want to go back. Hey, can I point something out? Hey, Rick, can we bring up Rick full screen again? Do you notice that there's a vault behind Rick that he's got so much money that he keeps a giant vault at his house. And right before we went on the air, Susan and Rick were stacking gold bricks in there and they closed it right before they could barely get it closed. It was a tight fit. It was. It's like they have a lot of gold bricks. All right. Pay for so, those um, so, so, well, this is just kind of answering the same question again here. John, John asks, will you use your ESR for portraits as well? or stay with the 5D Mark IV. I, I'm definitely gonna use the EOS R for portraits, especially since they just released an, a firmware upgrade that adds eye, eye focus, right? Where it, it detects the eye and focuses on it, which is a feature I think Sony mirrorless mm -hmm. has had, yep. but they just yep, added it in the recent firmware update. I think it's firmware update 1.2. Mm -hmm. Have yep. you updated your firmware yet, Rick? I haven't updated because I've been a, a little busy, you know, with the vault and the back. Oh, I know. The vault takes a lot of time. Stacking. Always it's, stacking. It's actually what is the paper background that we bought for 20 bucks that I use uh, for some of my shoots. But And actually, I have the cover of Lightroom Magazine and that in the back. But uh, speaking about the viewfinder, here's the thing. You've been to Photo Plus, right? And you've spoken at the at, uh, and shot at the Canon booth, right? Sure. So I'm at the Canon booth and I'm trying this camera and I have it tethered and all this stuff and I'm shooting with the STE3 and I'm shooting with a speed light, right? So the thing is this, because I'm shooting on manual, I'm shooting on the manual exposure mode, my flash is on TTL because I know some people always shoot on, on the manual mode. They say that in their like awesome flash books, but I shoot with the camera on manual, the flash on TTL because I use the plus and minus controls to uh, set the exposure. But 
If you're going to do that, you have to turn with this camera exposure simulation off. Because if I'm on a manual mode, if I'm shooting at a 200th of a second at F11 in at photo plus, right, to block out all the available light, I can't see anything. Right, so you have right. to turn off that exposure simulation. So I learned this on stage in front of like, you know, 100 people. Oh, gosh. Well, you know, Rick, um, a lot of people watching may not realize what TTL stands for. So I just want to let you guys know TTL stands for truly terrible light. That's what it's, it TTL stands mm -hmm. for. So not a fan, not a fan, Rick. I'm just not I, a fan. I know. That's why I was kidding. I, I, <laughs> I know. I know, I know you were. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right, so, so we got Will's, a couple. Will's got a question for here. Okay, uh, so Will's got. Uh, if you're familiar with the Canon 1D or the Nikon D4, D5, do you think mirrorless cameras available now can replace those types of cameras? Okay, so Will, I had both. I had the Canon 1D X. Excuse me, I had the Canon 1D X, yes. and I used to own the, a Nikon D4. And I would say uh, no, <laughs> no, 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 not yet. Not yet. Not yet. That's I key. think that the technology is there, but I don't. I haven't seen what I would call a sports or action. You could argue like the A9 on the Sony side yeah. could. Yeah, maybe the A9. Yeah, it could. But, but of uh, course, that the 5D or the 1DX Mark II is a beast of a camera. But Sony's so. problem is for sports, they they don't really have the lenses. Yeah. So yeah. that's why, like, I when I go to a sporting event. Mm -hmm. I never see a Sony, period. Yeah. Zero. Like, yeah. you're looking on the sidelines, and there's probably somebody out there that does it, but I, I have yet yeah, to I've go, oh, you're shooting Sony, because with all the other gear, gear photographers that are probably 85% or 80% Canon, 15 to 20% Nikon, and then there's always three or four people with an iPhone. I don't get it. But there's more. I will tell you this. This is the truth. At an NFL sideline, there are more iPhones on the sideline than there are Sonys. That's for sure. <laughs> it's the truth. I'm just telling you. I've been there. I shot a game this year. I never saw a Sony the whole time. Uh, anyway. I've seen them more. I've definitely seen them more. So. At sporting events? Not at sporting events. Okay, just I'm just more. talking about sporting yeah. events. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I see, I see Sonys yeah. here and there. Um, you know, just, you know, on the plane, yeah. you know, at the returns counter. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> It's a joke. I know. I'm joking. I know. Anyway, say, hey, Rick, I, I, we could talk about mirrorless all day, but I want to talk about your new project. So Great. <clears throat> you know that I was a big fan. Uh, I was a big fan of your last book. Oh, there's Susan. Hi, Susan. I was just coming from the vault, Scott. She's with her iPhone. Actually, with her we have iPhone. a vault in the other room. Oh, well, you should have. You, I'm sure you have multiple vaults, of course. But uh, anyway, Susan, glad to have you joining us. So Susan is a, a shark iPhone photographer. She teaches oh, iPhone photography classes. She's really good at the iPhone. And uh, these two are a tremendous team. And you guys put a, a book on Route 66 that I just loved. And uh, what I liked about it was it wasn't another teach you photography book, but it did have a little of that in there because you can't help yourself. But it was really more about the experience of doing route 66 and i love right. that and you guys have a new project you're working on can you tell us about it yes it's called the oregon coast here it is the oregon coast photo road trip book and it's how to eat stay play and shoot with your with your speed light on ttl like a pro <laughs> <laughs> i don't believe that's true i think you're mocking me no no manual works if you if you have a light meter you don't need a light meter, Rick. You got a picture of what it looks like on the back of your camera. Yeah, and you're seeing it real time. And your Rick, give me 15 minutes with you. And we'll make you. We'll, we'll have you never turn on TTL again. But you know, let's not talk about that. Okay. Let's talk about the Oregon Coast photo road trip. Hey, look, Rick. Look what I've got right here in the studio. Hey, awesome. I've got one, and we're going to give away two of these today on the show. We got a couple advanced copies of Rick's new book. So. Rick, tell us a little bit about the book and why it's so awesome, because it's not your average photo book. Well, Scott, we <laughs> love Oregon and we love photography and we've been to Oregon many times leading workshops. And this is like if you had like your best friend that you're going to go to Oregon and you say, your best friend, you pull up, you say, where should I go to take pictures? Where should I go to hang out? Where should I stay? We, that's what this book is about. We kind of have the prime cut of the Oregon coast for people who love to take photos. 
Very nice. That's a beautiful that's picture. Susan. Okay, the last three pictures were Susan's iPhone pictures, and the by pictures, the way. Yeah, the pictures are taken both with the wonderful mirrorless cameras and also with iPhones because everyone can enjoy taking photos out there. The iPhone is actually pretty well suited, as you know, to take landscape pictures. So since we oh. do a lot of landscapes, oh, it's yeah. really fun. Oh, yeah. It, and, uh, oh, that's nice. That's Rick's picture. That, that's, well, that's one of the differences with the, with the mirrorless and digital SLRs. You could control, as you know, we were talking about the ND filters. You could control the effect from, like, you know, a quarter of a second or whatever to, you know, a minute. Whereas Susan with the right phone, this does have a great feature in there called what? When you're doing the dreamy water, do you know that in live? Right. That there's mm -hmm. the long exposure. Filter, yeah. So, yeah. So when we're at some of these locations with the moving water, especially that one there, um, the spouting horn, it, uh, yeah, that one is one, that, that's the Thor's well. Yeah, the Thor's one, well. Is, is in the same area. I was there. I got soaked at Thor's well. I, I did you're not so see it yeah. coming, and I got completely uh, soaked. My camera gear and all, everything just wasted in water just because so it was so in, calm and then boom i know you get those sneaker waves yeah you have to watch out but in addition to just talking about where to go and how to take pictures we also talk about safety things like you don't want to get knocked over <laughs> by, by a wave you don't want your photography gear to wind up in the water so we have all these kind of uh smart tips on how to do it and be happy at the end of the day Wow. Well, congratulations on those beautiful shots, Susan. Those look awesome. And okay. Rick, uh, and the two of you have so much fun. And it's, it, I know it's got to be fun. I, I, this is my first time seeing it today, so I haven't got to spend any time with it. But if it's anything like your other book, I'm going to absolutely love it. And we're very grateful to you guys for letting us give away a couple of copies. Where can they pick up a copy? Uh, Amazon.com has it. Uh, uh, just type in uh, Oregon Coast Road Trip, Rick and Susan Salmon. It's on my website. And it's a, it really was a ton of fun. And, oh, please don't know, tell me. Go back one. Please, Susan, if you tell me that you took that with your cell phone, I'm, I, I'm, pull, I'm pulling the plug on this show. Well, I did, but she the did. secret is the app. There's an app called Lens Flare. So oh. it, it's the one, two. You take the picture, you look at the pictures that they're taking with the big cameras and then we can use apps to add in the <laughs> extra, extra things yeah. that's cheating susan and you know it, it. but wait wait, it wait, wait 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 i heard you say no, a couple i don't weeks think it's on the grid that it's you know 20 years ago you you would say it's not okay to replace the sky but now you think it is okay to replace the sky as long as you're honest about it okay but i'm not i'm not honest location, about it i don't go yeah. hey i replaced the sky i just do it yeah, yeah. i don't say hey you by the way here's rules. a picture and oh note i replaced the sky i do it when i'm teaching right, when I'm, yes, I, right. And, and i actually do sky replacement on the the seminar that i'm on now but i don't post it with by the way fake sky no. and i would not post it with fake lens flare either i would put the fake lens flare <laughs> there but i don't i don't have to announce it it's subtle you know it's yeah, fun but, Anyway, you guys, thank you for taking the time to, to drop in and see us. And thank you for answering those questions, Rick. And Susan, thank you for the, the insights about the book. We're very excited to be able to give away a couple of them today. Yeah. You guys are awesome. And get back to stacking the gold bricks <laughs> in the <laughs> salmon safe. Bye, guys. One of the many salmon safes. All right. Coming up next, we got lots more questions for you guys coming mm -hmm. in. Got yeah. some shout outs and we got some giveaways coming up. We'll talk about those when we come back from the break. Don't go away. We'll be right back.
This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Canon. Make sure you don't miss any episodes of The Grid by subscribing to Apple's podcast app or iTunes. It's free and we even have a special audio only version too. So sign up today. Hey, we're back, Scott, with Eric. We got some giveaways today. Of course, we are giving away, of course, two copies of Rick's book. We're giving away a Platypod Ultra. It's ultra cool. I will have this with me in Bari. Oh, by the way, if you want to see the Platypod in use on, when did I do it? Friday? I don't know. Someday. Yes. Someday last I week. went and posted some shots from me shooting for a day in Minneapolis, of all places. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you, I'm surprised Minneapolis had some cool places. Yeah, that and church was awesome. Yeah, in fact, I'll go ahead and pull it up. Can you pull it up on yours? Yeah. And here so, you're going to give away that. I'm too. also going to give away this. So this is my landscape book. It is uh, due any day now. It was actually due two weeks ago, but there was a printing problem, and they had to reprint the entire book, rebind it, and reship it to all the stores. So it's a little crushing for me as an author to have a book that should have been out, oh, three weeks ago, and it's still not out. Maybe by next week, hopefully. They will have them at, at Photoshop World next week. So if you're coming to Photoshop World, I'll be happy to sign one for you. I'm doing a book signing. New book. All right, here you Yay. go. So, all right, take a look at Eric's machine real quick. Uh, this is, so my, I, I went to the uh, the Twin Cities of, of, so look at this. This is in Minneapolis, or this is in St. Paul. This is actually the St. Paul Cathedral. It is like the third largest cathedral in America. It is giant, and I put also um, behind the scenes shots for everything. So I used a tripod, very little. I only used the tripod a handful of times when I first got there. And then I switched to the platypod to get those big epic shots. And uh, here we are inside, I mean, a giant cathedral, mega cathedral, like literally like something you would see in Europe. So beautifully mm -hmm. done. And this is, look at the shot, handheld, 800 ISO, sharp as a tack. And that's, this is just a reference photo. It was raining, I jumped out of the truck just to go, shoot, I never have a picture of the outside. That's kind of it, not a great picture. Then we went to the Minneapolis State Capitol building and look at, here's the behind the scenes. Look, little platypod on the floor. Look at that epic shot you get. And it looks so simple when you see it. Just, there it is, just up. I, I even that's made the joke. That's why nobody says anything to you. Yeah, no one says a word. Security looks at it, they don't say anything. I had security guards everywhere going, this is me bouncing it on a railing. And look at this shot right here. Hold on, take a look at the shot and then look at how it was taken. Balancing on a sign. <laughs> Yep. Just balanced it on the top of a little sign there. It was perfectly stable. And this is bouncing on another sign, aiming up. So that's when we first got there. And look at this one. It's another platypod shot. Look how down low I am. And you know what? Can, I, can you scroll up? So I'm there with the security guards and, and historians. So there's security guards, there's historians. Mm -hmm. and, and I take this picture, and they're like, so what are you doing down there? And what's a, So I, I, I show it to them. What do you think the first thing they said was? I've never seen a shot like that. I'm like... It's the magic of the platypod. Same thing here on the carpet. Then we went to, this place is amazing. This was my favorite. We went to this cemetery and in the cemetery is this chapel and, and we got some amazing shots in the chapel. And look at these shots. That's the platypod. Cause you see, if you see the floor like that, mm -hmm. you know, it's the platypod. And uh, what an incredible, only 10 rows in this whole chapel. Very, very small. It's suiting with based, the 16. Shooting with a 16 millimeter, the same lens yeah, I have here. There it is, laying on the floor with my platypod so I can aim straight up at the ceiling. Platypod works great for that. There it is. Anyway, if you want to see it yourself, go to my blog or Facebook and you'll, you'll see a link to it. It's on Adobe Spark. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I use to show the images. And this will be something, using Adobe Spark is something I'll be teaching my class in Paris in a couple of weeks because we all make Spark pages. There's the platypod. There you go. We're giving one of those away today, that exact one. By the way, I just kept it in my back pocket when I needed it. Okay. And actually, we got some, so we got some comments here. I think uh, if you scroll up just a little bit, we got this one comment here Can you about uh, from Jack saying, I watched Rick Salmon and Jeff Leinbach use the ESR to Canon Workshop in October. I was impressed on how easy it seemed to use. After watching Eric and Scott talk about it many times, I finally bought an EOSR back at the end of March, and I love it. Only regret was that I wish I had bought it sooner. You know, Eric, people that have an EOSR, I haven't talked to anybody that owns it. If you go look at my Facebook that's comments, a, that's a, a everybody's thread. like, I have yeah. one, I love it. I have one, I love it. I have the one, people I love it. Who have everybody that has one 
actually loves it. has loves, them. Loves, loves, loves it. Not on the internet talking about it because they don't have it. Yeah. Daniel says, uh, Scott, Rick, and Eric, how do you like the autofocus for action? I think the autofocus yeah. is fine. I haven't had any problems with it. I just don't I think of any. it. I don't yeah. think of it as an action camera. It's not. It doesn't replace my 1DX. I still have my 1DX. Yeah, it I mean, it's my 5D Mark III. It just matters what you're considering action. Like if you're talking like really high action sports. Yeah, if you're talking like pro if, sports. If you're nah. or you know something like uh, uh, birding or something where you're like having to really get in there and follow something and pan with something really quickly. It's probably not for you. That's where you're still going to be in the 1DX yeah. line or you're going to be in the D5 and like I said, line. I, don't, I don't really think for pro sports or serious, serious sports, um, I think that... They don't have anything yet. We, we don't really have anything yet. The closest thing might be the Sony, but I haven't tried yeah. the, the A9, so I don't know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Michael's asking a uh, mirrorless question. Will we see another DSLR from Canon? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I don't yeah. think Canon's out of the DSLR market, but... I think Canon would tell you that the future for them is mirrorless. Uh, so I, 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 they came out with a whole new mount. They're coming out with a bunch of, of lenses mm -hmm. for it. Um, I, I think that... I th They've I, announced a lot of Yeah, I think you'll see another... I, I, this is, I don't have any proprietary Canon information. They haven't told me jack. So, or maybe just go to Canon Rumors. Just go to Canon Rumors like we do. And <laughs> That's uh, how we figure I, out I think our news. around the Olympics, before the Olympics, certainly you'll see Canon come out, this is my prediction, with a 1DX Mark III. And it, I don't think it will be mirrorless. That doesn't mean that they won't come out. Like they're supposed to, Canon is rumored, I think they've actually confirmed it, that they're going to come out with a, some kind of a pro level mirrorless. Which they, that's not hard to figure. They've, they've said there's been hints towards it, yes. I thought they, they said I don't think there's like an official like, we will make this. Dude, pro. I think if you go back to yeah. the grid episode that we filmed yeah. with Canon. That's what I'm saying. They've Hawaii, said like, they yeah, said there's something. There are more and we certainly haven't forgot the professionals. They yes. did everything but say it's coming on this date. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Jerry's asking, uh, what Canon DSLR is comparable to the EOS R? The 5D Mark IV. I would it is say a, it is a clone. I would say it's a 5D Mark IV with more features for a thousand dollars less. Boom! Drops That's the it. Mic. That's it. It's and a 5D more Mark IV with more features for and without a mirror less. that flips up and without a mirror. So if you're doing long exposures, you don't have to worry about covering your mirror. Right. That's one of the. Uh, there's two things in here that I love. Number one is if you're a mirrorless shooter, like I, I, yeah, I teach long exposure photography. I'll be teaching it in yes. Paris. And we tell people, you got to cover this. Cover this, that. There, there's light leaks that'll come in here and ruin your photos. Did you know, tip of the day, on a regular Canon camera strap, on just a standard one that says the name of your mm -hmm. camera, it says Canon 5D Mark IV or Canon 80D or whatever, there is a little rubber thing on there. And that little rubber thing, away. you probably, it, well, no, it's attached to your strap. Yeah. And you probably thought, what is this thing for? It is designed for you to pop cover the cover over. off and it slides right over your viewfinder to cover it expressly for long exposures. That's what it's there for. So people take you know, tape and put things over it and pieces of cardboard in there. You don't have to do that with mirrorless. Plus this thing, so I did a video on it. Where can I find it? I did a video from Rome showing how when you do the the long exposure yeah i figured that out when it, i was on vacation and i was like changed the world right there i think we, you were the one that i was told me i about called it. you i think he called, I called me i'm in rome on like, with my students and he's like dude you gotta dude, try you gotta this try thing this. for long exposure and it's so great i made a video of it in rome i'll see you from the break remind me on the break yeah it's like you don't need a cable release you don't need a cable release because you can tap well, I mean, the screen yeah. it will time it for you, you. it it, it's really, really nicely it's done. Nicely it's done. Made and you for can long set the uh, delay. So you tap the screen, and then it delays. And then it then delays. it fires, and then it counts for you. It does. It the has count a little counting, for which is very so nice. nice. It's oh, yes. it's delightful. Anyway, make a long story short, um, it's and there's a third thing for mirrorless. W with DSLRs to do ND, you have to focus first. You have to do your focus. Mm -hmm. Then you have to turn your focus from autofocus to manual focus. Mm -hmm. Then you have to put the lens on because, I, I mean, your ND and filter hope you on. you don't knock something. Yeah, it's so dark that your camera won't be able to focus. But not with mirrorless. Your, can, your camera will be able to focus anytime you want. It takes out three steps out of the process. And if you're like me and Eric and we want to shoot a lot of ND stuff, 
taking three steps yeah. out of anything is worth its weight in gold. Let's go to some more mm -hmm. questions. Yeah. So um, Richard's asking, how far away do you feel any of the camera companies are from a pro-level mirrorless? I think they're all very close. I, I think, think they're all very close, and that's where you could even argue some of them might have yeah. something that could be considered Now, you're going to realize, if you really wanted to do the it, analysis... But it really matters also what you're considering what pro. pro. Because there, there are, I would say your average pro wedding photographer is using a 5D Mark IV. The Canon 5D Mark IV is one of the best-selling cameras ever, and it's because it is a very, very favorite with portrait and wedding photographers. And that, so they're already shooting this in, in a huge, huge way, and that's their pro camera. This is basically a 5D Mark IV with more features for $1,000 yeah, less. Is there anything that, that, that the 5D Mark IV has that that does not? There's one thing, and it's a stupid thing, but it's one thing. The 5D Mark IV has two card slots. Dun, dun, dun. Deal breaker. <laughs> Deal breaker. Jeez. Anyway, yeah, whatever. So um, <laughs> this does not have two card slots. Now, I will say this. I wrote this in my blog. So... I have a bunch of cameras that have two card slots, and I, and I rarely ever put two cards in my two card slots. I do not have a single instance in my entire career where I had a card go bad. I've only had a few cards go bad, period. But I've had a card go bad, and I was not able to retrieve the images off the card. With, like, software. With just whatever downloadable free software or something. So even if it, if it you know, oh, no, the card's gone bad, I still got all the photos back. Mm-hmm. No, not that it didn't take a couple of hours to figure out and calling friends and what should I try. You know, Terry White saved me once with one years ago. Yeah. But we're talking about a card going bad once every two years or so and then still being able to get the images off it. Yes. So I, I don't, to me, the two card slot thing is not a big deal. However, if you said, Scott, would you like an extra card shot slot? Sure. Yeah, why not? Will you, will you put two cards in it? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe if it really mattered, go. yeah, probably some, you know. But anyway, it, the two-card slot thing to me is, is not a big deal because I hardly ever put two so, cards in it. So, Jock's Photo is asking, is there a high-speed sync for mir in mirrorless? And what about the top shutter speed? So I got to go look if there's a high. I haven't done any high-speed sync with it yet. I, there's got to I mean, be, the though. Top shutter speed, I mean, on that, I mean, it's the same as the 5D Mark IV. It's at eight one eight thousand. Is it one eight thousandth yeah. of a second? Now the RP is one four thousand. Right, but this yes. one's eight thousand. We'll, we'll yeah. go look. Actually, yeah. if you'll look, I'm gonna go look at the other thing. Uh, coming up next, uh, I want to tell you something cool that I'm doing here in in coming up in London. We've got more questions. Got a lot of this is interesting. Got a lot of interesting questions. So stick around. Yes, EOS R has a high speed sync mode up to one eight thousandth of a second. There you go, Kuna with the answers. We'll be there right back. Go. Don't go away. Image restoration has always been one of the most rewarding things you can do in Photoshop. It's not just, you know, like fixing a tear. It's more fixing a memory. And then you present it to either a family member or a client and they just look at it and, you know, their eyes fill with tears or whatever it is. It's just, of anything I've done in Photoshop, it's by far the most rewarding. In this course, you'll learn how to deal with many of the common problems like faded black and white photographs, faded color, tears, rips, unwanted elements like tape and writing. We'll even talk about how to deal with missing body parts. If you need to fix someone's face or replace a hand, you can just borrow it from another photograph. Back in the old days, many photographs were tiny like this. So the challenge is how on earth do you take something like this and turn it into an eight by 10 photograph? So we'll talk about how to calculate the correct resolution so it's easy to take a small photograph and make it big. It's definitely a skill that takes some time to learn and really get good at it. And once you do, then it becomes a skill you can share with other people and repair the photographs for other families and help them restore their memories as well. Generations to come will look at these photographs and go, wow, that was taken in 1902 and it looks pretty darn good. If you want to learn key techniques to bring life back into old photos, please join me for my new class on image restoration only on kelby1.com. I found that there are common questions that come up in how to start a sports photography business. Not just how to take the pictures, but how to do the business of it in order to get published and uh, hopefully make a career out of it and be paid. And we'd bring an audience in and they would ask their questions. I will answer them and we will see if we can 
get to the bottom of how to make a living in sports photography. I think what the audience uh, will get out of this class is a better understanding of uh, sort of the progressions from shooting like youth to high school to college to the pros and then actually starting to use some lighting as well and move into the commercial sector of the industry. There's a repetitive pathway in all of this that I think will be very valuable to people in learning how to better uh, conduct their business or even start a business in sports photography. Come join me at my new class on KelbyOne.com. This segment of The Grid is brought to you by Platypod, the world's most compact tripod base. Hello, everybody. We are back, me and Eric. Eric, yeah, we got, a, we got a bunch of people saying hel hello. We're, uh, Dalton saying hello, Grid Nation. Dalton. We got uh, Debbie saying hello. Nicole saying hello. S. Bauer saying greetings from sunny pa uh, Panama City, Florida. David saying hello from Sweden. We got Doris from Oldsmar, Florida. Look at that. And uh, down the street. Yeah, down the street. Uh, David from Colorado saying hi. Uh, we've got Joe saying uh, hey from New Orleans. We got Jeff saying hello. We got Richard saying hi. And then we got Roberto Pisco Piscatani saying hello. Piscanti, Roberto, Piscanti, Bon Jovi, Van Halen, yeah, Piscanti. That. Oh, and then we got Terry White saying hey guys. Hey Terry. Hey, you know, Roberto Piscanti is going to be at Photoshop World coming all the way to Italy, his first time yep. in the United States. Big, big We're going to welcome. He's staying with my brother, Jeff, which means it's not going to go well for Pisco. <laughs> anyway, but we're looking He's forward to it. bring the thunder. We're bringing the thunder. Thunder and lightning. All right. So anyway, we're, we're excited about Pisco coming. Yeah, He's a definitely. great guy. He's one of my favorites. He's a, just a wonderful photographer and, and a really, really fun guy. And he makes a very, very mean uh, spaghetti aglio and olio. There you go. All right. So you I, had a you had a do you have a video? I didn't find, no, the, you video. Didn't find the video. I would have. But we to do keep have looking. the other thing we were going to talk about is that uh, there was that one article. Oh, that, yeah. We, I want to yes. talk about this. So Eric and I, if you remember back uh, on the grid, maybe I don't know, a couple, couple months ago, yeah. maybe a, maybe a month ago, a month ago, we talked about one of the things that we said were were broken about camera reviews, and and the thing that's broken is when you have a Nikon photographer reviewing a Canon camera. Like, I've been a Nikon shooter for 20 years. Let's take a look at the new Canon camera. You're not going to get a, a reasonable review. I want, if I'm a Nikon photographer, I want to hear from a Nikon photographer. Is this any good? If I'm a Canon photographer, I want to hear from a Canon photographer telling me, because I, I don't want any built-in biases. This is the, this is the camera mm -hmm. I'm already on. Everybody already has a platform. Nobody's sitting watching this show that goes, I have no camera. I have no investment. I have nothing. Everybody watching the show here already is on some platform. Right. right. So I want when, I, when a new camera comes out for my platform, I want to hear a review from someone on my platform that will say, okay, it has this, it doesn't have that. Da, da. I don't mind them comparing it to other cameras. I don't even mind if they say, oh, the Sony's better or the Nikon's better, but I want it to come from a Canon guy or okay. girl, you know. Yeah. So yesterday I saw this, this article and I'm like, oh my God, here it is again. And I want to read, look at, the, look at the headline. I pitted Canon's affordable, and they put it in quotes, EOS RP against my beloved Sony. Don't even read it. Yeah, you're done. Let right me ask there. you a question. Like what, the do you think is he, done. what do you think he <laughs> said? I, I, the RP, which is $1,000 less than my Sony A7 III. Your beloved one. Your beloved one. Your it's beloved better one. go buy the Canon. What do you think? I, you don't even have to read it. It's a complete waste of time. So what now, if, it, if he was saying, I'm comparing the Sony whatever against my Sony, my beloved A7 III, Mm -hmm. That's okay. That's reasonable, and I would respect the opinion. But let me guess: a Sony guy does likes his beloved Sony better. It's it's complete. This is what's wrong with photography reviews. Oh yeah. You 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 want someone who understands the platform you're on, the pluses and minuses, likes it reasonably to tell you whether the EOS R is a good camera. I can tell you what I've told you. You've read it on my Facebook page. I haven't talked to a single person who has who has an R that doesn't absolutely love it, but I've not seen a single review from a Sony user that, does, that likes it. They always go, oh, well, I mean, it has this or it has that. It's good. It's $1,000 less, but I still love my Sony. 
Well, duh. You're not going to get the guy that, who owns a Mustang to tell you how much he likes a Chevrolet Camaro. I want a Chevy guy to do it. Yep. Drives me nuts. Uh, End of soapbox. <laughs> stepping off. <laughs> Boom. I want to tell you something cool. All right. Yes. This is big. Next month, June 16th. Now, the event that I'm speaking at goes the 15th and 16th. It is called the World Modeling Convention. It's coming up this June in London. I think this is really special. Look at this. So this is from their site. I just copied it for you. The Business Design Center is an awesome place. I'll talk about that in a second. But look at this. They're bringing together 800 models, 600 photographers, 120 fashion designers, 50 model agencies, advertisers. They're going to transform that entire awesome event into this place where you can do shoots. They're setting up all kinds of shoots, themed decor studios, catwalks, networking areas. They're bringing together photographers and models and hair and makeup and stylists and they're putting it all together and this I, I can't wait to go to this i think this is going to be the most amazing thing and uh, i'm teaching retouching at the conference so come and check out you got to be there it is the world modeling convention in london their website is you can see it right there wmclondon.com so just think world modeling convention mwc london it's next month june 15th and 16th i'm personally teaching on the 16th you know who else is there joe mcnally there you go a lot of great instructors i think it's going to be an amazing event that business design center eric we don't have any place like that i've seen in america oh yeah that is the greatest venue i've, I've been lucky enough to speak there a number of times not only is there a hilton attached to it but across the street is a byron burger and byron burger is as close to an american burger as you're going to get in london unless you go to five guys they now have five guys in london but yeah. yeah, they do. They do. Yeah, they do. They have five guys in London. They have five guys in Dubai. They have right there at the. And the... speaking of five guys, we got five more questions from guys <laughs> coming in. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. Here so, we go. Uh, Larry Smith asking you, Scott, uh, have you used the EOSR in a low light situation? Well, sure. Yeah, of course. It's great. You know what it works like? 5D Mark IV. So it's basically a 5D Mark IV four, four and low light. More features. So it's yeah, it works fine. Yeah. It looks great. Uh, Jim's asking, are there any drawbacks to using an uh, EF and EFS lenses with the R, the Canon Mono Adapter? Which I can tell you right there, there you go. The EFS lenses you can actually use with this camera where you can't use EFS lenses yeah. with full frame Canons. So that's one. But is there any drawbacks that you've seen with the ring adapter? Zero. Yep. I haven't no noticed drawbacks. any whatsoever. So John's asking, when you use a, the Platypod, do you use a remote cable release or set a timer? So John, my, my advice to you would be not to use a cable release because the cable release says to security guards, this is a tripod. <laughs> I only use the either self timer or I trigger it from my camera. So my camera, a Wi -Fi too, but, yeah. I, but I just bought, I just bought for this. There's a brand new wireless adapter just for this it is a little wide it's nice looking finally they made i showed eric they yeah. look it looks nice it's like cool looking yeah, they, they, have a, they have a little special wireless just for it it works great it's different than the other ones don't don't use the cable use the self timer or whatever mm -hmm. next yeah so kevin's asking uh scott tapping the screen any concerns with camera shake? No. So, Kevin, what I do is I set my self-timer. Yep. So when I tap the screen, it doesn't take the shot. It waits a few seconds, then it takes the shot. And I also, I don't, Kevin, I don't go like. <laughs> I it go, is amazing how tap. light. How light. I mean, you, you can just you can think when you push a button, sensitive. you're doing a lot more. But when you just tap the touch screen, yeah. you're like brushing it. Yeah, I would say that it is much less movement than actually touching your shutter. And much when less. you're stopping it, you literally, you just like kind of just like yeah, you just touch put your, you it just and it stops. Touch, it's very, very, yeah. uh, uh, what would I say, sensitive. It's very sensitive. Very sensitive camera, obviously. All right, next. So Michael's asking, uh, do we think Canon's next mirrorless body will target A9 buyers? I No, I think Canon's next mirrorless body will target whatever they consider to be pro shooters. I don't think that they're doing it to target. I don't think people are going to leave their Sony and sell all their gear to switch over to this Canon thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think whatever big switch is done is done because now the Nikon people that wanted mirrorless have a Nikon and the Canon people that wanted in mirrorless have the Canon. There was a point where if you wanted mirrorless, you had to go to Sony, 
But I just saw. I've shot with all. I mean, they're all great cameras. They're all great, they're all but, great but there's cameras. no reason to change anymore. No, that's what In it is. In fact, I just saw yesterday they posted the worldwide mirrorless market stats. So there's this company that tracks mm -hmm. the, the full frame mirrorless. That's the key. Full frame mirrorless. And between November and now, Sony lost what? 17% of the worldwide market for, for full frame mirrorless. So they were 65 or 67%. Now they're down to 50. Canon's at 30 something and, and Nikon's at 15, I think. I think, yeah, 15, 14, something like that. Very, very small. But I think that, that now that, that Nikon users have a very good, the Nikon mirrorless is good stuff. The Canon mirrorless is good stuff. There's not a reason to switch platforms anymore. Here. In fact, hey, take a look on Eric's machine. These are a couple of shots taken with a Nikon mirrorless and a Canon mirrorless. Wow. Yeah, so let's, let's take a look here. Look at these, I'm right? To, like, uh, clear my throat all the time. Why is it not the same size? Well, anyways. They might be different one, megapixels. There's one and there's one, right? So there's either a Nikon or a Canon, and there's either a Nikon or a Canon, like within inches of one another on the same settings. Now, what, what Nikon were you using there? The Z6 or Z7? Z6 and the R EOS R because EOS they're the R. same. And I could I will say, too, I was using a Sony, but uh, the Sony didn't fire. <laughs> so, How many uh, times have you tried a Sony for shooting I, rockets? You know, I've tried a Sony a few times, and two of, the, two of the times they have failed were... Um, I've never had a Canon or Nikon fail. Anyways, I've had them where it's been my fault. So answering Nina's question so right there, there have either of you tried other mirrorless brands? I yep. have tried the Sony, and Eric has tried both the Sony, Sony and the Nikon. Nikon. But that's one, that's the other. That's so my one, Nikon, my the, Nikon the reason why I'm giving the Nikon love is because doop, doop. I've heard a lot of people that are Nikon shooters that are friends of mine whose opinions I trust they're like, dude, this, this, these mirrorlesses are real. Mm -hmm. and, and they would tell me. These are the kind of people that would go, eh, it's got a couple of things. But they're not. They're like, dude, these are great. And I've heard nothing but, but good things. So, uh, And, of course, the Sony people are, are hating on the Nikons because the Sony, the Sony photographers have become the – they've gone from the most happy to the most defensive people in about six months to a year. Mm -hmm. They're the, the most defensive, unhappy photographers anywhere. Winners, here we go. Bettina, you won. Congratulations, you won the Platypod Ultra. Congratulations. That's courtesy of our friends at Platypod. Marcia Ziegler, you just won Rick's brand new book. And Dale Jennings, you just won Rick's brand new book, The Oregon Coast Photo mm -hmm. Road Trip. You just won those courtesy of Rick and Rick's publisher. And then Raymond Gobernatz, you just won a copy of the landscape book. So congratulations to all our winners today. Thank you for watching the show. Thank yep. you for playing along at home. Stacy asks the question. Yeah, Eric? Stacy's asking, what's your thoughts on Canon's phone app uh, to trigger? It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Uh, it works. I, I prefer to use any other. I, I prefer to use any other wireless trigger only because it just seems like a pain in the butt to have your phone out. <laughs> Scott, but, Scott, but yes. what about Mike asks, how about the Olympus EM1X? So interesting that you said that, Mike, because in that report that I just saw, I think it was either this morning or yesterday, it pointed out that Olympus did not even have a percentage of the worldwide sales. It's probably a great camera. I think Olympus, I, I have friends that you shoot Olympus. They love their Olympuses. They are great cameras. Yeah. But unfortunately, I don't think Olympus sells a whole bunch of them. And here's why that's a bad thing. The only reason why it's bad is because there is a massive community around Canon cameras. And Nikon cameras. And Nikon I cameras. And there is a burgeoning community for Sony users. And then when it you, really drops off. When you're, yeah, it really drops off if you're a Pentax or Olympus or you're kind of alone on an island. Not that the camera's bad, not that, but you're never going to be able to borrow a lens. You're not going to be any place and run into another Olympus user. If it's, sir, you look at each other like, you got me, me too. And you run to each other and hug and, and, you know, and you talk about no one understands us, but I'm sure it's a fine camera. I, I have nothing bad to say I've about Olympus. I've never shot with it. I've never yeah. shot with it. I, and I have some friends, a couple of friends that, that shoot Olympus and they really like it. I have a couple of friends that shoot Panasonic and swear by it. 
but those unfortunately there's there's such little slivers of the market that you're you're just you've decided for some reason I'm going it alone. Yeah. Like I don't want to be a part of a big community where everybody helps everybody and everybody yeah, I mean, there's a million a, tutorials and books yep. and like, eh, it's like you've decided I want to be an outlier. And I understand that there's people that are just like yeah, I was out one time in a workshop, and one guy had a Pentax, and actually it was it shot very similar to the Nikon, but uh, the only di different was three of the people on the workshop shot uh, Nikon, and he could never borrow anything. Yeah, everybody's <laughs> swapping lenses. But, but if you look at like, the images, they're very similar. Yeah, Eric, how many times do you and I swap in, uh, swap lenses or equipment? All the time. I, I borrow All so much crap time. from Eric. Now, Eric, to, in his defense, in in Eric's backpack <laughs> is more stuff. Like, whatever you ask prepared. for. Hey, do you have a, a charcoal grill? Yeah, hang yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, let's go. Whatever you want is in Eric's backpack. So it is, Eric, I highly recommend traveling with Eric wherever you go. Because he's a got user. everything I if even you're a Canon carry, user. I even carry Nikon and Sony cable releases just in case. He cares. Because I do care. All right. Well, I've thanks, had people borrow many of times. Thanks, everybody, for watching today. Thanks and congratulations to our winners. Great having Rick Salmon. We love Rick. And, uh, and thanks for everybody for watching. Next week, we're live from the grid in Orlando. I hope you'll check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. And if it's not too late to come to Photoshop World if you want to hang out with us, we'll see yeah. you guys next, next week, week in O-Town. O-Town. Take care, everybody.